Hi everyone, my name is Mikio. In this video, I will explain how to use mock in PyTest. A mock is basically an object that replaces a dependency that simulates the behavior of the actual object. In testing, especially unit tests, you want to isolate the code from the dependencies and focus on the part to test. In this situation, you can use mocks in your test. You can also use mock when the dependencies are not available or it is not easy to use the dependencies in your tests. Python has a built-in mock library called unittest.mock. It has a lot of functionality, but you only need to know the main functionality of the mock object to get started. The mock library has a class called mock. When you create a mock object, it is a mock object. If you call it, you get another mock object. If you access any attributes or methods of the mock object, it creates them dynamically and returns a new mock object. You can configure them to return any value you like. Open the Python interpreter and import mock from unittest.mock. You can create a mock instance from the mock class and you can see that it is an object of the mock class. When you call the mock object, you get another mock object. Let's see this is a mock object. And if you call mock object, then you get another mock object. You can create a new attribute A on the fly, for example. And it returns a new mock object by default. You can create another new attribute called b and it also returns a new mock object. By default, a mock object returns another mock object when you call it, but you can use return underscore value so that the method returning a specific value, for example, a, like this. You can also use side underscore effect so that the mock calls a specific function when it, it is called. Let's create a function uh, like this. And then set this function to the side effect. So you can call this function like this. You can also specify an error or an exception in side effect. For example, you can configure a mock to raise a zero division error. So when you divide an integer with, by zero, you get zero division error. But you can specify this as a side effect. So when you call this method, you get zero division error. The mock class provides various assertion methods to verify the mock object's behavior. For example, let's create a mock. Let's call a method A. If we call mock underscore calls, then you can see that uh, it keeps track of all the calls. You can also verify whether a specific mock is called or not 
by using assert called. It returns none when the assertion is successful. So in this case, the assertion is successful. But if you call mock b dot assert called, it raises assertion error because the method b has not been called. And there are several variations such as assert called once or assert called with arguments or assert not called. So for example, let's say mock b dot assert not called which returns none, which is successful. You can also check the order of the calls. The attribute uh, mock calls returns all the calls like this. So if you call if I call it keeps track of all the calls. And there is a method called assert has calls, which checks whether the specified calls match the actual calls or not. Like this. We have to import calls first. which returns none, the assertion was successful. But if it, I change it to a, a, B like this, then it raises assertion error because it, the actual call was call.a, call.b, and call.a, but I specified a, a, b. So you can use all these assertion methods in your tests. Now let's look at an example of using mocks in unit test. In this video, I will use an example of an article Mocks Aren't Stubs by Martin Fowler. The links are here. In this example, we have two classes, warehouse and order. The warehouse object holds inventories of various products. When we get an order object, we fill it from an warehouse object. If the warehouse object has enough product, the inventory is reduced and the order is filled. If there is not enough product, the order is not filled. Here, let's assume that we already know the specification of the warehouse class. So we can implement the order class based on the specification like this. The order class initializer takes two arguments, product and quantity, which are set to the attributes underscore product and underscore quantity. The class has an instance method called fill, which takes a warehouse object. We need to invoke its method has underscore inventory with the arguments underscore product and underscore quantity to check the inventory. The method has inventory returns true or false, depending on the inventory status. If it has a sufficient amount of product, it returns true, so the fill method can call remove to update the inventory. Then we can set the attribute underscore fill to true, indicating that the order has been filled. If the inventory does not have enough quantity of the product, as inventory returns false, so the underscore filled value stays false, indicating the order is not filled. The instance method is underscore field returns the current value of the underscore field attribute. Now let's look at how we can run unit tests for this code. We will mock the warehouse object as we only focus on the order class. As you can see here, you can write the first test case to check that the order is filled when the warehouse has enough product. Firstly, we need to import the mock class from, the, from unit test.mock. We also need to import the order class to test. The first part of the test is to set up the test data. 
and we can create an order of Taliska with a quantity of 50. Then we need a warehouse object, but as I said, we are not interested in testing in the warehouse class, or we don't even have the warehouse class yet. So we mock a warehouse object by using mock to simulate the behavior of a warehouse object. The warehouse variable is not an actual warehouse object, but behaves like a warehouse object, and we can control how it behaves. In the second part, we set the expectations. As we saw earlier, we can create any methods dynamically in a mock object, so we can create the has inventory method and set it to return true, simulating the inventory has enough product. We then create the remove method, which returns none. In the third part, the order object invokes the fill method with the warehouse object as an argument. The order object does not know that warehouse is a mock object so it simply runs the method as if it were a real warehouse object. And finally, we check if the order has been filled or not. In this case, is filled should return true because has inventory returns true. You can check that the test passes by running PyTest. We can also add another test case where the warehouse does not have enough inventories. In the second test case, the has inventory method of the mocked warehouse object returns false, which simulates the inventory has insufficient product, so the order is not filled, and the is filled method should return false. You can check that the second test also passes. If this example looks confusing at first glance, you can try changing the return value and see what happens. For example, you can change the return value of has inventory to true in the second test. And the test fails. You can see that the is field method returns true. It is because has inventory returns true, meaning that the inventory has enough taliska. Hopefully, you can see that you can fully control the behavior of the dependency, which is the warehouse object, because we are using mock instead of the real warehouse object. As we saw earlier, the mock class has various assertion methods about method calls, so we can check what methods the order object has internally called. We can add two additional assert statements at the end of each test like this. In the first test, we've added the two assertions. The first assert underscore called underscore with method checks that the warehouse object has called the method has inventory with the argument taliska and 50. The second assert underscore has underscore calls method verifies that the warehouse object has called the two methods has inventory taliska 50 and remove taliska 50 in this order. We've also added similar assertions to the second test. The first assert underscore called underscore with is the same as the first test, but the second assert underscore not underscore called checks that the remove method has not been called. It is important to have this assertion because we cannot check it just by looking at the output of the is field method. We can confirm that the test still passes. In this video, I've explained how mocks work in Python by looking at the basic functionality of mock in the unit test of mock library. 
It is a handy tool to replace an external dependency and set up test. Then we looked at how we can use it with PyTest by using an example of an object-oriented program. I hope this video has helped you understand how mocks work and how you can use them with PyTest so you can run tests more effectively. That's it for this video. I'm Mikio and thank you for watching.